We have met me before. Um, hello again. For those new faces I've never met before, hi for the first time. I know a lot of you feel like it's really weird for a financial planner to be here today to talk to you about money, but uh, I think it's the root of a lot of problems that we face in life, whether you're in tech, uh, in pharmaceuticals, in the medical industry, whatever else, okay? So my background was in tech as well. I started freelancing at a very young age, uh, 14 years old. This is the kind of thing where you'd be proud to announce when you are like age 20. You'd be like, oh yeah, I know I freelance at the age of 14, but now I'm like mid-20s. Um, I don't like to brag about it, so I just say I started freelancing young, uh, founded a company, eventually moved into financial planning to join my dad's team. Um, so while I was uh, in financial planning services for the first couple months, I actually went on to pursue associate wealth planner accreditation. So it's an independent board away from like all the other financial services company. Now, after graduating from this program and earning my accreditation, um, I did a bit of reflection on like my days in tech and I really, really wanted to slap my old self. Unfortunately, my life is not like a Tamagotchi where there's like a reset button and I can go back in like five years and redo everything that I've done wrong. So um, my purpose here is to kind of just share the lessons that I've learned or rather the experiences that I've had or seen people go through so that you guys will make the same mistake and five years down the road, you're not gonna be like, this financial planner smoked to me once and I gleaned nothing uh, useful from her. So I'd like to discharge my duties as a financial planner to you guys today, okay? So, uh, let's ignore and so go for a while. Uh, it's a bit small, can you guys see from the back? This is, oh yeah, Honesty is like really big here. So who here used Honesty before? Or who here is from Honesty? Ooh, I must be careful. If anybody here is from Honesty, I love your app. Okay, I was a very big user of your app. <coughs> until a while ago where FairPrice pulled out. So I used to use Honesty when um, I made tacos. So I always had taco Tuesday nights for myself and my family. So it's very convenient and you know, I just like click, click, click and order. So once FairPrice pulled out of Honesty, uh, that was when I was like, oh, there goes my taco Tuesdays, no more. So I'm the typical millennial where I like depend on one application for my lifestyle. And once it's gone, I'm like, dang it, like I will not do it again. You know, so I just left it hanging. But when Fair Price pulled out, I never, um, I never thought much about it. Like, I didn't suspect something was wrong with honesty. Like I just thought, you know, or maybe they had like an argument and both of them couldn't like partner well together or something, right? So uh, yeah, let's ignore and so go. So that is um, honesty for Singapore. They recently met into a lot of uh, funding issues. They've got a lot of debt, a lot of creditors chasing them for money. Um, and this is based on, I think the maximum funding that they got was uh, 20, oh yeah, it's a 20 million Series A funding. So um, for tech juniors like yourself who are interested in joining a startup or when you're in a startup, a lot of times, you know, startups can brag about their funding situation, uh, which to me back then was like, oh my gosh, y'all got 100 million funding, yay! Right, it's like such a great thing. But now when I look back, it's like, dude, you just signed yourself up for a $100 million loan that you need to pay back somehow. Like, I ain't gonna go around bragging saying, hey guys, I just got a hundred million loan from the bank. Yay for me. No, I'd be like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna pay it all back? So like, these are the things that sometimes we don't think about because the media really fluffs up a lot of the startup stuff. Um, so I thought this talk might be useful for you guys today. Now, further away from Asia, uh, there's Theranos. Anybody read Bad Blood? Quite common, right? I mean, this book is like, crazy popular now. So Bad Blood actually talks about the whole story that unfolded for Theranos, the health IT company in, based in America. And uh, so it was run by this founder named Elizabeth Holmes. So Elizabeth Holmes is known for her really, really low voice and her black turtleneck because she really wanted to assume the role of um, the female Steve Jobs, which was a little weird. But I thought I was the only one who felt like it was weird. A few people did like pick up a few like, you know, like weird vibes from this lady, but everyone else was like, oh my gosh, she's like the star of the valley. She's got a lot of funding. She's got, she's like branded so well. It's like amazing to work in Theranos. But little did like consumers like us know or like people outside and both inside the company know like all the crazy things that was actually going on with the management, with the funding, with the cash flow issues. So as junior techs or as tech people, as much as you want to join like a startup, 
or like a new a, a fun tech company that just got funded. You have to make sure you watch out for yourself. And for me, I'm here to tell you how you can watch out for yourself in terms of your personal finance because it's going to play into a lot of factors of your life. If you're a father, you have children in tow, right? You have to find a way to support them even in days where you are retrenched. So uh, in the view of time, I don't have time for Kahoot. So I just like to ask the crowd like, for your opinion of what you would look for if you're joining a startup for the first time. Like, if you see the startup, it looks very exciting. What are some factors that you guys will look out for? Funding. Is it funding? Okay, funding. Adequate funding. Okay, what else? Team size? What else? Nothing. Uh. Just see the logo nice, the office nice, got ping pong table. What's the motive of the startup? What they're trying to do? The mission, yeah. right? The mission and the vision. Okay, what else? Employee reviews, good. That's a very important thing to look at. So now, a lot of times we, um, we look at the mission, right? We look at the funding. But sometimes we also forget to look at the employee reviews, the past employee reviews, which is very, very important. People don't leave the company just because they feel like they want to leave. And they want to leave like a bad negative review. Like maybe one person might feel, might be sour grapes about it and like leave like a very bad review on Glassdoor. But if you see Glassdoor with like 20 negative reviews, I think that says something. Like, even though the founder is very convincing, even though the mission is very convincing, even though the product is very shiny, like Honest Bee. Uh, sorry for those uh, Honest Bee employees and ex employees. I don't mean to, set, to, to, to bring your company up so much. Uh, <laughs> okay, so here's a case study of a recent Singapore healthcare startup. I don't know whether you guys know this company. I've blanked it out anyway. So, like, employee, past employee reviews, right? Just simply go to Glassdoor, sign up for an account, and then you can review the companies that you are uh, intending to interview at. So it's so blur. I can't see, even I can't see. Okay, I underlined some important things, but I can't really read it. It says, uh, oh, managers never communicate the problems effectively. That's one bad review. Poor management, uh, management fires employees without valid reason. This is, alarming for me as a financial planner like what like what would happen if you have a family that you need to raise um and then this one says the management doesn't have any idea on how to manage people you are given false hopes and fake promises which should come from the vision the mission of the company uh, employees are not treated with respect and there's a lack of job security now the next one is even worse it's talking about more of the i think it's a upper management um, so and so is a narcissist, pathological liar, uh, went to group after group to manipulate into providing funding. So funding could be a misleading factor as well from time to time, um, especially if you know you have a very manipulative person who's able to charm and manipulate funds out of people. Um, so yeah, advice to management, stop manipulating and lying your way through life. So these are like really big red flags. Like if you do not take these into account, you need, you need to talk to me. I will nag at you. I'm a professional nagger at times as well. It's like my part-time job already. <laughs> okay, so uh, financial problems that you will likely face joining tech startups or tech companies. Um, these are just a few. Uh, of course, there are, it's not just limited to tech companies. I'm not trying to you know, say that tech companies are bad. They are great. Um, and some of these factors actually can be applied to a lot of other small businesses or new businesses. So keep an open mind about this. So some of the factors are misuse of funds and uh, employees were kept unaware. Um, instability of the jobs and layoffs can be quite sudden when it comes to startups. Uh, it could be like, you know, going to office the next day and the founder is like, okay, everybody, we got to let 29 people go. And these are the 29 people, please pack your stuff, you know, you need to leave. And that's, a, that's, that's not a nice thing to wake up to, really. Um, and sometimes in your tech companies, the very well-established ones, you have a very good problem. You have a very high salary, but then you also feel the pressure to keep up with the Jonases, okay? Keeping up with everyone else's lifestyle. I'll go into that later. And sometimes when you're a bit disgruntled with your full-time job, you know, because you have tech skills, you're highly employable or rather people want to hire you for other projects, you might consider freelancing on the self-employed route, which has a different set of issues itself. Okay, let's look at them one by one. The first one, misuse of funds, employees kept unaware. At first, these problems can be very small and negligible at the beginning. You might pick up some signs of it when you're working in a company, you may not. Um, but it really snowballs into very big issues in the long run. So previously in um, one of the case studies, there were actually EP holders or other foreigners who were brought into Singapore to work in that particular startup who were, um, whose pays were, like the salary was not paid out for a couple of months. And they were just, you know, the founder just kept convincing them, hey, uh, it's okay, you know, funding is coming, just hold on for a bit longer, hold on for a bit longer. 
So he held on for two months. This guy has two young girls who are going to rather expensive schools here in Singapore because he's a foreigner. And so eventually by the third month, he's like, I, I can't, I just, I can't do it anymore. So these are real issues that happened in Singapore. Um, so do keep in mind. Next, uh, instability and sudden layoff. So as proven by many, 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 many startups, if you are a paying user of tech in Asia, I'm not, I get to see the brief, like the first three sentences. Then after that, they're like, oh, please subscribe. I'm like, you ain't taking my $1.90. I'm not doing that. <laughs> but you can see a lot of news about technology companies laying off people very suddenly, out of the blue. They can just go and your job is gone the next day. Okay, so, um, and this will leave you unemployed and it could last for up to six months if you're lucky. If not, then it could last potentially longer depending on the job market as well. Okay. Now, the good problem, high salary and uh, lifestyle expectancy. So sometimes, you know, especially if you're in a C-suite, um, everyone around you could be earning upwards of 10K a month and they'd be coming, like, strolling into the office with a $9 organic coffee in hand, you know, coming to the office, putting it down, and, like, looking at you going, like, hey, you buy kopi si, ah? Why? You cannot afford $9 coffee, man? So, like, sometimes, even though, like, for me, I like my kopi si, even though I, I could be earning much more than, and afford much more than that sometimes. Um, but it's just... It, it does give you an unnecessary social pressure from time to time. So when you feel that way, uh, keep yourself in check, you know, like uh, just, just say you like OBC, I guess. There's nothing really wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being the black sheep in certain scenarios like that. Um, is there another scenario that I can raise? Right now, I can't think of it. It was on my mind a while ago. Later, if I remember, I'll tell you again. Now, <laughs> self-employed people, freelancing on the business route, because you have very great employable skills. You have skills that people want. You have skills to build something, to build the next, I don't know, the next Amazon or whatever else, right? So I, although it might seem like a very lucrative option um, and a very exciting option to be your own boss, uh, you can sometimes go into that route completely unprepared for the finances that come along with it. So you have a lack of stable salary as well as a lack of employee benefits. If you're a Singaporean PR or a Singaporean citizen, this is what you'll be facing. You will not have your CPF contribution by your employers. Now, uh, just a show of hands, anyone here has a financial plan or a financial portfolio they can call a plan or portfolio? Raise your hands. Good, I see some hands. Well, lucky I see some hands. I felt so worried. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. Good job, guys. Um, so just a brief overview, a financial plan is a big concept. It includes things like, you know, budgeting, lifestyle planning, retirement planning, savings, insurance, as well as, you know, ways to get out of debt if you are currently in debt. Now, a financial portfolio, however, is commonly mistaken as just your portfolio of investments, which is not exactly very true because financial consists of all three. Insurance being your first line of defense, emergency cash savings, and then also a, divers, a diversified portfolio of investments. So it consists of all three. And it's a very well-rounded, all-weather portfolio that can last you for the rest of your life. All right, so just a quick overview. This is applicable to everybody. Let's just imagine your adult life right now, if you're not schooling, uh, as a bathtub, okay? Whatever you are earning now goes in to the bathtub as incoming water from your faucet. Everything that you're spending goes out, you know, as leakages, as spills from your bathtub, right? So whatever you accumulate in your lifetime will be your assets, your net worth, and that's how much water you have in your bathtub. Now, we all want a full bathtub, right? We don't want this, like, sad-ass... Oh, sorry, I say bad word. Is that okay? Can you blank? Okay. Yeah, we don't want, like, a little bit of water, you know, by the time we're 60 plus, and, like, we have so little water in our bathtub, we can't even keep ourselves clean or warm at all. So, um... In, as your, your main goal as an adult is to ensure that as you grow, as you age, the amount of water in your bathtub climbs along as you age. So that when you retire, you have a nice warm bathtub to dip yourself in and enjoy the hot bath, okay? Next. So, some actional tips to stay prepared in your field in technology and in startups. So, I'm, remember I mentioned emergency funds earlier. So, there are two tips here. For those who are currently full-time employees and companies, it is advisable to have at least six to nine months of your expenses kept in a savings bank or something that's liquid, like yeah. savings bank is always the best because you can withdraw at any time. Six to nine months of expenses, they include maybe your rent, your um, insurance premiums, your day-to-day -day needs for transport for food, 
Okay, for self-employed people who are even business owners, it's advisable to keep up for the 9 to 12 months. That's a good gauge. Now, the second tip. You guys have to keep in mind to stay frugal, not try and keep up with the Jonas's. From time to time, yeah, you know what, indulge in whatever you want, indulge in some fancy trips, some fancy dining, go all out because you deserve it, you've worked hard for your money. But not every day because it's not sustainable in the long run. You want to ensure that what you earn today can also pay for your meals in the future, not just for now, right? Okay. Uh, okay, insurance is the first line of defense. Anyone here plays those like city building games, those empire building games on your iPhone and stuff? Right, right, me too. Like, I love those games. Now, who in those games, right, with the money that you have, will buy all the weapons you see and just go out conquering other lands? Just conquer other lands and don't care about the land that you currently have. No, right, that's like kind of silly. Like even if you're in real life, like if you actually own a piece of land and you want to you know, be a warlord and like conquer other pieces of land to expand what you have, you need to be able to protect what you have from other people invading it, from other people destroying it first. So insurance acts as that thing that protects what you already have so that you can go out and conquer for more. And the more you conquer, the more you need to protect. So it's a very easy way to remember why insurance is very important here. So it protects your ability to work, your ability to go out and run for more land, uh, but it also prevents your current finances from being destroyed in uncertainty. So it uh, prevents your... Wow, why am I so like, lost for breath? It uh, prevents your current land from being destroyed. So from being taken over, from being destroyed by whatever reasons, okay? So here's a good quote. Insurance is the only thing that pays you a known amount at an unknown circumstance, which is why um, it's, it's very important that you have that in your portfolio. Now, the third thing that you want to include in your portfolio, aside from emergency funds, aside from insurance, is a diversified portfolio of investments. Now, like my, in my previous talk, when I asked, what is investment? Everyone shouted, Bitcoin! And I had like a diarrhea on the inside. I was like dying on the inside. I dude, no, get it out of your mind. Investment is not like a get-rich-quick scheme, okay? Most of the time, when you're talking about investments, you have your high-risk investments, maybe you're investing into a company or investing into Bitcoin, but you also have the lower-risk investments, which will definitely, or rather, gives you a better uh, security over the long run with moderate returns. So you want to balance these two outs to meet different goals in your life. You have your long-term goals, including retirement, not just kids or not just marriage, including retirement and short-term goals, things like your wedding or you know, housing uh, down payments and things like that. So uh, an important thing when it comes to investments or building out your investment portfolio is to ensure that whatever you are doing, you keep this in mind, that you are paying yourself in the future and that is as important as paying yourself now. So don't go all out with, like don't, like let's say you have $50,000, don't put $49,000, $999 into like some very shady but super exciting uh, cryptocurrency or like, you know, whatever your friend says is very exciting that will reap you 20% returns overnight. Okay, those are things that you need to be super skeptical about. So be realistic, know that, you know, there's no free lunch in this world. And um, if you are lost for advice, you know, you should always approach someone who is, who are, who is able to give you unbiased advice on your investment options. Okay, so, oh, okay, I think that's all for me. Did I finish too quickly? I don't know. Okay, so thank you for your time. I actually have a lot more to share. I shortened down my 60 slides presentation to 23. So um, I actually talked more about financial planning, uh, investment portfolio planning, retirement planning. Um, and if you're interested in anything like that, feel free to let me know. Or you can contact me with my email. Um, also, sometimes I read like articles. I only wrote two of them, intending to keep up with it. Uh, but it's been a bit tiring for me. So. Yeah, just reach out to me on LinkedIn, on my mobile number, or my email address. Um, from the feedback that I gathered in the past sessions, a lot of people tend not to want to ask me questions after the event because it's, it's not very comfortable to share your personal finance issues uh, in a group setting. So uh, feel free to just drop me a text or call me anytime. Yeah. So if you can, take a bit of time to provide me with your feedback on my talk. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, it will help me, uh, I guess, improve like my speaking and you know my offering to the crowd. Like I don't know if this is something you guys are really looking forward to to learning, and if you've gleaned anything useful out of it. If so, please let me know. If not, also let me know. Uh, I'm I'm good with taking criticisms. It's okay. I can handle it. 
I ain't no strawberry. Okay, so thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, anything else, uh, let me know, I guess, in, in any channels. Uh, thank you, Junior, for having me here. Thank you so much, Harry.